What is up, comic fans? Hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Hello and welcome, Crypto Comics Nation and CouchCon on Ice. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This is fan-freaking-tastic. This is the Sunday of the event, and we are still all alive. <laughs> so far. Thank so you, far. Various levels of that, but yes. All right. So I'd like to make some quick introductions. This panel is Indie Comic Publishing, and I will do some quick um, <laughs> intros. We have Geo. AKA Jeffrey Thomas. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Gio. Hey guys, uh, Jeffrey Thomas. Everyone knows me as Gio, so Gio's fine too. <laughs> I am one of the staff members of CouchCon, and I am also the author of the book, The Wayward Astronomer, which is an illustrated novel set in the Dreamkeepers universe that David Lilly, who's also on the street, did amazing artwork for. Fantastic. So, yeah. And next, I would like to introduce Gemma Young. Hi. Of Gemma Young Studios. Gemma, please introduce <laughs> yourself. Um, I'm Gemma Young. I both write and draw comics. I'm mostly known for my comic, Children of Elder, which I publish online for free on various platforms. And then I also write the comic, Temerity, which is drawn by Chad Harden. And these are both uh, independent published and kickstarted so i do comics i also do enamel pins and art books for other artists excellent and next i would like to introduce a song Z bazil bazil please go ahead and introduce yourself And Bazil might be frozen on us, so. Those are cool in the background. I am going to, we're going to come back to Bazil. Wait. Well, there is that delay. Yeah, there is there's a major delay. delay. He's muted right now, it looks like. Oh. There's a little mute thing next to his name. He's self-muted too, so I can't unmute him. All right, Bazil, unmute yourself, and I'm coming back to you. <laughs> So um, we're going we're going to come back to Bazil for his introduction. Right now, I'm going to move over to Darren Davis of Tidal Wave Productions, Blue Water Productions. Um, Darren, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Darren Davis. Uh, I'm the publisher of Tidal Wave Productions. We've been around for 20 years as of November. I'm also known for creating a comic book series called The Tenth Muse, which is also 20 years. And um, so. Tenth Muse and Legend of Isis, which we did at Image Comic. Uh, we started there, and then we started self-publishing about three years later. Um, and still, we've done about fifteen hundred titles now. Uh, and yeah, we're still going strong. All right, thank you so much. <clears throat> One second here. Next, I would like to introduce David Lilly of Vivid Publishing. David, please Hi. introduce yourself. Sure. I'm David Lilly. Uh, I'm the creator of the Dreamkeepers graphic novel series, which I very much like. And it's, ex it's expanded into stuff like there's a, a tabletop game for it now, Skirmish. And Vivid Publishing is also publishing more authors. Here's one example, Firebat. It's our first Christmas comic, and I'm really excited about that because it's awesome. Um, so yeah, we're, we're into comics and games and publishing and we are having a very fun time and I'm working with fantastic people. All right. Oh, <laughs> that was a trick we do. <laughs> the bangs of bam. And Bazil, can you, are you, are you there Bazil? No, he's. Still coming across frozen, so I'm going to move on to Sean Keenan. Sean Keenan of Comics to Movies. Sean, go ahead and introduce yourself, please. Good day, guys. Um, I'm Sean Keenan. As yeah, you yeah, know, uh, I'm, I'm live. Okay, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get to you in one minute after Sean. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Sean. No problem. Uh, so as you can tell, I'm uh, I'm from Australia with uh, with the accent. So I. A uh, publishing company called Comics to Movies. Um, so we've been publishing for about five years. Um, my main title is the Extreme Champion Tournament, 
which uh, just recently won Best Comic at a uh, Film Award, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, we also nice. publish um, Terra Olympus, uh, which is a sci-fi series. Uh, we've just um, finished a Kickstarter for our latest series, which is called Talos of Sparta, which is an alternate history um, book. We have a Kickstarter launching on the 19th of um, December. I know. Can I go now? Fifth one for the year um, called Fractured Shards. And uh, we are opening up our publishing wing to other creators in 2021. So it's been a, a very busy year this year and I'm excited to, to be on the panel. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Now, Bazil. Go ahead and um, go ahead and introduce yourself. And, and everybody, I apologize. There is a delay. That's one of the biggest problems because he's in Cameroon, Africa. While we wait for him to start, I'm actually going to drop off because we've got other guests that are coming on right now. So to make room inside of StreamYards, I'm going to drop off, but I will be in chat and watching everyone. I'm watching. All right. You. Um, <laughs> yeah, you have a little bit of the delay because I'm right down at the Africa, I think the distance and our network is not the best. So I'm um, an independent comic artist. You are, and do you have anything else to add, Brazil? All right, okay, I thought you didn't hear me. So I'm an independent comic artist where I've been working on the book we are currently working on a book called Katungo, which is being published digitally. He's muted again. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. No. <laughs> and that's not me. You muted yourself. Are you sure, Jared? Jared? I don't know. Who, positive, who gave, dude. Who gave him control? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, you have no idea how true that is. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he just joins with the voice and removes his video. That oh. could help. Hey, Bazil, did you did you hear what Gemma said? Just turn off your video and and only be connected with voice. I think that would maybe help. Please, Mister. Please. All right. All right. Well, while he's doing that, uh, I just wanted to announce that uh, during this panel, we are going to do uh, some giveaways as well as we have a new badge just for this indie comics publishing. So, yeah. Fantastic. Well, let's let's get off to to, to a good start with 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 um, a great question, which is so this is about indie comic publishing. And, and as I have been introduced to this industry, um, I know that indie comic publishing is extremely hard and, and not very monetarily rewarding. Um, starting with it, the first person that raises their hand, right there? Yeah, right. Um, starting with the first person that raises their hand, why do you still do this? That's what I want to know. Okay, Sean. Yeah, that was quick. That was quick. We're all crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think Gemma hit, hit the hit the nail on the head. There, it is. It's for the love of the medium, um, the love of storytelling, and uh, as much as you know, I guess we all try and um, make a living out of this. And and Darren can probably uh, talk more about this being an in industry for so long, but. Um, you know, we, we do it for the love of it. We do the love for the love of storytelling, the, the love of getting our books out there. And and um, I've always said, you know, that interaction with fans when you actually have them come up to you and, and they're so excited about your book um, that you've you've released, um, you know, that makes it all all worthwhile in the end. Oh, awesome. Now, Darren, you, you had your hand raised next. I, you know, I've been pretty lucky to be doing this 20 years. Um, you know, I started off at Image Comics and I was pretty lucky to get signed on with them. And then my first comic book, you know, I was looking at what other people were kind of doing 
And so I knew, I saw what was kind of popular back then, which was the Top Cow style. And so I hired Marv Wolfman to storyboard or to, to write the script to 10th Muse. And then I hired Ken Lashley, who was coming off of Rising Stars, which was at Top Cow. And then I got a couple, I had Randy Green who did Witch Blade to do like a lot of the character designs and that type of stuff. So my comic book launched literally at the sixth highest only comic book. And, and this is what I always tell people when they want to break into, into the industry is that I always have a hook with a lot of my books. So like with 10th Muse, there's so many books on the shelf and with 10th Muse, we use Sable from the WWF as a photo model. And so that got us on Entertainment Tonight, Inside Edition, all these like weird shows. And, but I wanted to do the book because there was a lot of celebrity books at the time. There was like China and The Rock and all of them were pretty much done or Alley Cat and stuff. And all of them were done just, you know, focusing on the celebrity where we did the 10th Muse with or without Rina Miro. And if you like Rina Miro, who is stable, you can pick up the photo cover. And then without it, it was a really good art and written book. And that's why I guess it did so well. And 20 years later, I'm still doing 10th Muse. And yeah, and I do tell people, honest to God, that if I can do it, they can do it. It's just my biggest problem with a lot of indie people is that they just put their stuff out there and they don't promote it. They don't go that extra mm -hmm. mile to market it because you have to market your own stuff. So, yeah. Go ahead, David. I guess uh, I would say it's like definitely like what those are guys are saying is on target. Um, there's a little bit of craziness. You, you, you only do this if you really love to do it. And for me more specifically, it's like, I've got this vision in my head that is so clear of this like universe and these characters and the story that doesn't exist unless I make it. And so I just want to make that thing more than anything else in the world. So I'm going to do it come hell or high water. And I've sort of accumulated a secondary objective as I'm doing this, which is um, I do think that there's a lot of dysfunction in the current comic industry that could be done better. So I want to do things in a way that improves the whole market, hopefully and makes it easier for the people that are coming after us to do what we're doing. You know, maybe if we can blaze some trails, get some new business models established, it'll just make it uh, less of a daunting, impossible task for people that want to break in. So it's not like, oh, you're going to break into this industry. You'll never make money. Instead, it's like, well, you know, if you're good enough, it's a functional market. So you might, you might get somewhere. I think um, my path to being an author and publisher is probably one of the weirder ones out there. <laughs> Um, I actually started as just a fan of David's comics and his universe is really, really rich um, with a lot of potential for building characters in it. And I just started playing with some characters that I made up myself and put them in his universe. And I was writing my book, um, not really intending to make it a book, but more just I wanted to explore these characters and explore this universe and see what happens. And uh, one thing kind of led to another and I ended up finishing a whole full length novel and I shared it with David and David was like, wow, yeah, this is really good. Do you want to like make it a real book? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do want to make it a real book. That'd be <laughs> awesome. So uh, we worked together and, and we, you know, did a Kickstarter and funded it and now it's, uh, now it's published. So um, awesome. it's been an amazing journey and, and I want to just, you know, mirror everything Sean said, um, you know, the love of storytelling and sharing your stories with other people. It's a really powerful experience that's hard to, like, describe to someone who hasn't created something and shared it with people uh, before. And when you get feedback from readers, knowing that, like, your work in impacted them in some way, um, that's a really special feeling and, uh, and just goes to show how powerful stories really are. And I think, I think Bazil um, unmuted, so I think he's ready to say something, Jim, and then I'll get to you. Go ahead, Bazil. Bazil, yeah, can you um, hear me? I'll put up. Yeah, I get you now. Um, I would like to say the imaginations that we have in our head, there is no other better way to do it than to put it through comics. You know, the images that we have, the emotions, the stories we want to tell, it will not be easy to tell it using a real life humans. So the best way is to draw out those images, trying to put everyone to 
feel themselves into the space of our universe, to feel themselves into the emotions of our characters and try to get the story that we're trying to put out there. And comics gives us that that expansion to flow freely. We have the ability to bring everything in our minds right down to the pen and the paper. The only limit is our imagination. So that is why we, we actually chose this form of expression, of expressing our stories. And I think there was no stopping, there's no stopping to it. And I'm actually trying to create some sort of a form through which we can be teaching this kind of, of uh, this, this style of comics right down to the next generation that is coming after us. Excellent. Uh, Jim. Yeah. Uh, Tom just hopped in. We want to. Tom. Oh my gosh. Let me, do a, let me do a quick introduction. <laughs> we have, we have Tom Rapka with us. Tom, would you please introduce yourself real quick? And then I'll get to you, Jim. Yeah. Sorry. I'm Fine. Tom Rapka. Um, I run and uh, do T3 comics with other indie artists and just make comic books, children's books. And I'm here to have fun. Woo! <laughs> All right, that sounds perfect. It took forever to get in here. I don't know what happened to my computer. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> That's all right. At least you made it. At least you made it. All right, go go ahead, Gemma. Um, I have several reasons why I I am an indie <coughs> publisher. Um, one is because I do have these crazy stories that I want to tell, and um, I'm an escapist. I I read and you know I read comics and books because. Um, I don't want to live in the real world. So uh, I make stories about not living in the real world, I guess. And um, I, I create stories that will hopefully make people happy and bring more joy into people's lives. That to me is really, really important. And also another reason why I want to be, you know, a bigger indie publisher is to bring happiness to other artists and creators because getting into creating comics can be really, really hard. And if I can create a platform or a means for more artists starting out to get their work out there and actually get paid for their work, that to me is just, that that's my goal is to help other artists get paid to do something that they love and be happier. Oh, excellent, excellent. That's awesome. So, so Tom, just, just, just to catch you up, the question, the question was, um, knowing what I know now about this industry and, and, and indie comic publishers, um, and the monetary, um, values that you guys are swimming in, I, I was just wondering why anyone would work in this industry. And, and, and so, um, if you do have an answer to that question, feel free to, uh, chime in. Um, I have and no the, idea. The That's monetary a part's a joke. We all know we don't make any money. Yeah. <laughs> it's just for the love of it, I guess. Great answer. Because there's, really, there's no promises of it happening or working or anything. So it's just really doing it for the love of it and for having fun. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, at least you're, you know, have an awesome hobby on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's a what's a good what's a good um, way for an indie publisher to really know that they are moving in the right direction? If that makes sense, like like there's got to be some way to tell if you're doing things right. What what would be some of those signals? What would be some of those signs? Go ahead, Darren. Trying new stuff, trying unique things like signing on with you guys, signing on with, you know, drive through comics, going, you know, I embraced the digital world of comic books at the very beginning. We signed out, we were, I think, one of the first people to sign out with comicology. And now they've gotten so big that we disappear and they don't care about us. And so, but trying all these different things like going the school and library route and selling books into that market, you know, developing just not trying to sell it to one demographic. And so one of the things, like I know my company set up in a different way that I have three different categories. I have the categories of the creations that I create, sort of like, as I said, like 10th Muse or, you know, Legend of Isis. And then this can turn into movies and TV and stuff. And then I do other things where we kind of get licensed properties and like, you know, John Stahl, who is a big horror novelist, and to do, we've done Logan's Run. We worked with William Shatner. Um, with Ray Harryhausen was one of our biggest things that we did with Wrath of the Titans. 
And, um, and we did we do sequels rather than adaptations of things just to make it cooler for the fans. And then we also do the biography thing, which people have a tendency to think that's all we do because these things get us attention. And we do them for two reasons. One, I do want to tell good stories. And my background is in the entertainment world. I worked at entertainment television. So I understand the power of celebrity and collectibles and that type of stuff. So when the celebrities or the politicians that we do, you know, those bring, as I said, those bring super attention to the company. And when we get like, I've stuff to do well. When we get like, whether you like Hillary Clinton or you like Sarah Palin or you like whatever, you know, when they sign a copy for me, that's actually pretty cool. And I just, <laughs> it's pretty neat. So, yeah. so, so the reasons we do these three different things is one, the biographies seem to make more money than, you know, Legend of Isis does. You know, it's really hard because of that world. The license stuff gives us validation as a company, you know, because we are working with like icons, like when we worked with Adam West, uh, John Saul, you know, S.E. Hinton even, you know, who did The Outsiders and bringing new stories from them. And then, as I said, and then my own creator own stuff is, you know, the stuff that I'm, we are trying to get into movies and TV and brands and, and doing that. So that's what, you know, that's why I'm still doing it after 20 years. Go ahead. I saw a hand. Yeah. Gemma. Um, I think one way to know if your business plan or your comic is working is retention and growth. So whether or not, you know, you will collect readers as you go through your comic journey. And one way to know if it's working is if you keep those people and then your readership grows from there. And at the beginning, it's going to be very, very slow, which I think is why retention is probably the most important part, is keeping those readers and attached to your work. And then as you grow, then, you know, that's obviously a bonus. But like if you have a big jump of followers and then it drops off, um, that can say whether or not something you're doing is working or not. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Can I expand on that a little bit? Go ahead, David. I think Gemma's definitely correct. Retention is critical. You want to make sure you're getting retention and to know whether or not that's happening. I think you want to look at like the big scale, like the data on your social media sites and stuff like, Oh, are the numbers going good? Is audience retention, you know, look at all those graphs and things. Because that will give you information, but it also, especially when you're starting out, it's going to be almost impossible to grow in the current social media environment. So you got to look big, but you also have to look uh, small. So find anyone that's reading your work and enjoying it and try to get them in conversation and just understand like, hey, what do you enjoy about this? Why do you like it? Why don't you like it? And if you're getting a few people, especially that just come to you to talk about if they enjoyed it, why they like it, why they would like to see more, if you can understand one person and understand why that person is really getting value out of what you do, then you know there's value there and you know that you might be able to deliver it to other people. So look at the small scale, understand that even one person could really love what you do and that might help guide your efforts and put you know all the big data stuff in, in, a, in a context that has a human element to it. Gemma? Yeah, and when you are small and you have just a few readers, you have the time to do that, but the fact that they took a chance on you even though you're not big, that means that there, there's a higher chance they're going to love your stuff and, you know, you're able to interact with them more easily and, you know, keeping those valuable readers from the beginning is crucial to growing your audience in the long run. Tom, I, I just had a question. I was wondering how uh, do you guys feel about as like a new creator, like using Facebook advertisements? I like it personally. I we gain followers from that. Uh, we gain sales from it. I gain more sales from posting on Facebook than I do. Like I don't get TikTok, so I'm not the demographic. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm the same way. But I, I am, I'm, I post a lot. I join a lot of Facebook groups. You know, I join. Here's a. I can give you a secret. Go join like we do as if we do a lot of celebrity comic books. So I do have a fake Facebook account, and I'll I'll say it. And um, and that, that person is a fan, and so she'll go into a Beyonce 
group and go, oh my God, this is super cute. Oh my God, look at this. I got to get it. And I get more sales from that. Because <laughs> wow. It's, 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 it's interesting. Biography things for us really do well. And it's, and it's hard because there's so much competition in the fiction world. So, you know, and as I said, we always try to do things with hooks. Yeah, when we created Legend of Isis, you know, I knew that there was a 70s TV show called Secrets of Isis. But then what we ended up doing, because I thought of this as a business, is I contacted the people that did Secrets of Isis, and our comic book is on the DVD for Isis, the TV show. So I always try to do things that really blow down doors, try new different things. So, and that's what I keep telling people, really push yourself, ask people. You know, I asked William Shatner to work with me and he said yes. And just because I asked. So, and I didn't have to pay a licensing fee to work with him. So, oh. and he's, and we, we, partnership. and that's the same thing with Stormy Daniels. Yes, I get to work with Stormy Daniels and she's pretty cool, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, I love, I love Space Force. Awesome. Yeah, Space Force is really great, so. Yeah, I'll just um, just add on that as well. Like we're doing our first launch with a celebrity on the nineteenth of um, December called Fractured Shards with Dan Furigal, um, who played uh, Agron out of Spartacus, and it was exactly what uh, what you said, Darren. I just literally just asked. I just said, "Oh, you know, <laughs> would you be interested in doing something?" And um, he was like, "Oh, hell yeah! I've actually got this idea." but I don't know where to start. Can you help me? And I was like, well, I can do do the writing. I've got the writing, the artists and everything. If you lend your name to it and everything. And I've been super um, surprised at how hands-on he's been. Um, like he's done uh, interviews, he's done videos, um, you know, and we've built up such a large amount of engagement um, you know, through uh, the, the Facebook page and everything, you know, on my my series that I've sold heaps um, heaps of issues of, I get like, you know, that 10 to 20 um, interactions or whatever. But this series that I haven't even released yet, we've got 170 to 250 um, engagements <laughs> that we haven't even released yet. And that's just the power of an influencer or a celebrity or, wow. or someone that can lend their name um, to, to your business. And, you know, your question was, how do you know when something's going right? It's when people start saying yes and when people start coming towards uh, to you. Um, and I think that's where I really, really changed. I was a, a fan, like um, Jeff was saying. Um, it was, this was not something that I, I had planned or set out to, to do. Um, so I seeked a lot of um, information from other people and it's um, now interesting where I've reached a certain point that you find that people are starting to come to you. And I think that's when you know you're in, a, in, a, in the right direction as well as when people are, are coming and asking your advice. And you know, the biggest thing I could say is you know, pay that forward. And um, as uh, Vivid Publishing was saying before, that you know, if you can set a pathway and, and uh, help others along the, the journey, that only comes back to you, um, you know, in, in yeah fans in support in um you know even sharing and and uh cross promotion and all those type of things you don't realize how answering one person's question um later down the track can can lead to, to 10 new fans because they've posted up on their own page or or something like that all right well the next question actually comes from chat uh let's see valerie asks darren how have you generated interest in non-celebrity uh, biographical comics? Mm -hmm. Valerie, uh, when you were just saying about like, how do you know if you are doing well and that type of stuff. So we did a book with the uh, fabulous Beekman boys and this kind of shows you, and literally I, I have all of stuff. So you can tell like literally my comic book about uh, a llama, a female llama is on the NASDAQ, you know, big jumbotron. And so that shows me that like, wow, I'm doing something right. And to team up with them and they, after, they got to ring the NASDAQ bell and they talked about the comic book. And so promoting the, as I said, promoting the non or the fiction stuff that we do uh, that doesn't have celebrities attached to it, it's, it's hard because there is so many, that's why I always say to have a hook. And so just like with ISIS, there's a hook to that. You know, creating a cool concept is great 
you know, I created a series called Dorian Gray, which is a modern day version of the original Dorian Gray. And instead of just doing it as a cool comic book, we already did, we did novels on it and we worked with Marcosia. And so we're trying to create different brands like what, uh, David, is that David? Uh, like what you're doing with your game. I think that's brilliant. Like cross reading into different, different areas. It's brilliant, so. And your cover's really cool with the red stuff, the blood. Oh, thank you. Is it's that, our first foil stamped. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Well, show oh, us what, shiny. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Put that up front and center. There oh, we go. Awesome. Good oh, shot. wow. I like that. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I like I like shiny stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? I think gold follows shiny. All right. Bling, bling. <laughs> Bling, bling. So any other questions? <laughs> any other questions from anyone? Because right now, and, and chat, please feel free to ask us questions. We have mm -hmm. some very successful indie publishing comic creators. Oh, oh yeah. Um, Jenna can go first. Or she can go first. What? No, yeah. I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, here she'll, we she'll have a some whole great answers for questions us. to get through here, and I think we've only answered about two of them. So uh, why don't we just keep on rocking here? Yeah, go ahead, can Tom. I, can I ask you a question? Whoa. Oh, so this is for everybody. So dealing with retailers as an indie publisher, how do you guys find that? Is it difficult for you guys to get more than just local stores, or is it easier? So are you guys all with Diamond? Is that how does that work for you guys? I'm not with Diamond anymore either. So, yeah, I could just say uh, initially I thought, oh, I'm gonna be a comic book publisher. I guess I'll get it and distribute it into stores. But looking at Diamond's terms and stuff, it was never economically viable for us. So we just never went into Diamond to begin with, and we're still not really in many stores. We've been building a direct to customer system. And that's been very good for us. And I love comic shops. I want comic shops to thrive. But it's just uh, aside from the stray one that I visit myself, and then I can talk to the person and we get our stuff from their store. And usually it sells and makes some money. But uh, you know, there's only so many of me to go around. So right now, we're just doing a business model that almost totally doesn't involve comic shops. And I would like that to change. But I can't exactly entice them to go outside of Diamond because they just don't like to do that. OK. Go ahead, Gemma. Um, I actually know that a lot of comic book shops are starting to drop Diamond and are actually more willing to work with the creators now. So I haven't worked at all on getting books into the stores. We're a direct to customer as well. But um, one of our goals in the future is to call up comic book stores or find, you know, the main comic book store that that kind of funnels down to the smaller ones and see if we can work deals with them. I know a lot of other indie comic creators who have done this very successfully and have never had to touch diamond and have a personal relationship with comic book store owners. So I, I have a quick question. Um, you, you got uh, both David and Jimmy, you said you guys do direct to direct to customer. You have a direct to customer business model. Um, how do you facilitate that? Though? Like what way of form of communication? Is that like an email list or something of that nature? Uh, definitely, yes. In fact, I would say for anyone getting into indie publishing, you definitely want to start building an email list because especially with the dynamics on social media, sometimes moderation can be very arbitrary. So you might find your account that you've invested thousands of hours in or even years or a decade into that you've built up a presence, you've built up those followers. If one moderator decides to take you out, you're gone and you have no recourse. Like, it's over. So you need to have backups and ways to get in touch with your customers. They're not totally reliant on some of these social media platforms, just as an insurance policy. And also that's a way for you to figure out which customers are really into what you do and you can target them more accurately and maintain relationships. All right. I was curious with nowadays with people being very, uh, you know, sketched out by things, what is the best way to go about building an email address if you're just starting out? Giveaway. Uh, I always find um, uh, giving away a first issue. Um, you know, our model is uh, we create um, 
get all of our printing costs through Kickstarter. So that's how we, we cover um, everything. Uh, we do a certain amount of single issues where we travel around and do a lot of conventions and then we go straight to a book market. So we then go to um, bookstores, libraries, um, and because we've only got 18 comic book stores in all of Australia. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. compared to, and we're the size of the US in, in landmass. So uh, our market is quite, um, quite short in, or small in regards to that. So to try and break into the US market uh, and um, as Dave was saying about uh, Diamond and, and the costs involved there, especially with shipping and all that type of stuff, we've found that uh, going selling single issues on Kickstarter and being able to deliver those and then being able to collect it, collect it into a, a trade and send it um, off through the bookstores has been um, a, a better model for us uh, at the moment. Um, but I have forked out the money to actually to come over and do some shows um, in the US. So, you know, we did uh, San Diego Comic Con and had the first exclusive Australian exclusive comic uh, over there. Um, you know, I've done a, quite a few in Texas. Uh, love, love me, my Texas. Um, so I've done a few shows there. Uh, so, yeah, sometimes, you know, you need to, to kind of also put your money where your mouth is and, and get out there and, and do these these type of things and, and get known and um, that type of stuff. But in regards to an email list, it's if you can give away your first issue for free for an email, that's always good. But one thing we've started doing is we've actually reached out to other creators kind of like what uh, we've all got here and offer a bundle. So rather than just one comic for an email, we're saying, hey, we'll give you 500 comic pages for nothing if you give us your email address. And, and I found that's worked really well uh, in regards to building up my email quite quickly. Um, look, you do have a, a, a quite a few drop off on that, but the retention is is about 70 percent, which is pretty which good. is pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, okay. Gemma and then Darren. Um so one way I found uh, gathering like emails is um, going to conventions. Um, I have gone to conventions with Chad and appearance does matter when you're asking for people's email addresses. Just so you know, Chad is an older man who is bald and he's not exactly, you know, the most beautiful looking person when he asks <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said that. Tell him you said that. <laughs> he, he's very aware of this. We have, yeah, anyways, when he asks someone for their email, most people won't give it to him. Oh. Whereas if I ask for someone's email, they don't even think about it. They just write their name really? down. Really? Are you trying to tell yes. me to shave? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't be... You know, you know, like you can't be me, obviously, but you know, if there is someone, you they know, could. if you dress up nicer and more professionally, um, people will take you more seriously. Guess you are gonna have a shave then, Gemma. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> for a skin suit, too? Can I have your email and a skin and a skin suit? <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask them, for anyways, twirling my mustache. Um, <laughs> so when you present yourself at conventions is important when you're trying to grow your audience, especially if you're trying to hit a younger demographic. Um, and then another way that I've found getting emails, the best is actually doing Kickstarter campaigns. And they're like, you should get your, mm. you should have your email list before you run your Kickstarter. But you know, you can't always have that massive email list from the beginning. And I found doing, uh, you know, a bunch of Kickstarters over the last few years, um, you have access to those people. And while you can't usually get their, e like in the Kickstarter terms of service, you're not supposed to copy paste their email and add it to your email list, but there's nothing saying you can't ask for permission to email them later. So when I'm doing- We my always ask that at the end of um, our, our Kickstarters, can we add you to our email list? Yes, so, yes. So that. when you- yeah, when you're doing your surveys, add a little checkbox. Do you want to be added to our email list? And a lot of people yeah, yeah. actually say yes. And those are the best people to get on your email list because they're already spending money on you. Excellent. I like that. So, Go ahead, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I think uh, 
The email list after a Kickstarter with that checkbox, that's brilliant. Also, the in-person approach is probably the best. But we have one other trick that we use sometimes, which is we have uh, these very fancy bookmarks with a QR code on the back that goes straight to our email newsletter. So if you make these seem special to people and you give them out, um, it's not as effective, but it just puts more seeds out there. And you might get an occasional person pop in from those. Couple, uh, two Go things. ahead, Darren. Uh, so I work with a bunch of other indie publishers. We kind of are like, they're like our sister companies. We are working with Marcosia. I work with Bright Anvil, Red Anvil. Um, and so we share stuff. And one of the things that I'll also do to help out other indie people, and you guys included too, is I run, comic books have what, 24 pages in it? And they need, there's four extra pages in a comic book. So I'd rather run it for another indie company or a nonprofit and so, Tom, if you need an ad for your thing, I'll give you an ad in our comic book. And same thing with any of you guys. Because I think Thank you. It's just I want an uh, ad. Awesome. I already hate it. I'm going to get for it's baby, But so one of my I, – I go a different model than a lot of you guys. I don't really – and I probably should get more emails and that type of I do have email list. <laughs> I do. I have I have email list and email list and all that stuff. But one of the things that works for me specifically is when we left Diamond, you know, I just went straight, you know, like basically print to order. And then I signed up with Ingram. And Ingram is fantastic. And they're really helping comic book creators. And so like this is the difference between like a floppy that's just regularly printed and what Ingram actually does. It makes it into a more special graphic novel, little mini graphic novels. And we sell these for like $5.99. There's still a, a profit margin in it. And they get distributed worldwide through everybody through Amazon. And there's like, I would say like 150 different places, like books a million and that type of stuff. And signing on with them was one of the best things. And I got them through Marcosia because once again, we could be sharing resources and helping each other out and you know that's what marvel and dc are not doing so I, 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 Ingram. that's awesome and so i don't well, have costs so i don't have to do i don't have to do the kickstarter to get a printer so uh, i think that's a really good point you just made there darren at the end there is it's not us and them we're we're all in all in this together and you'll notice that comic fans love comics it's not it is not a it's not a oh if if they buy um uh, tom's book they're not going to buy my book that's not that's not the case at all and we need to get out of that that mentality so helping yeah. other creators all it does is help yourself we and do we're all in this together so we a lot of yeah, exactly. all right so we have a new guest uh right now uh we have what TCT Comics in the house? How you Jamie doing, Jamie Colby, what buddy? Up? How you doing? He he was late, and and just like, while we make this introduction, Jamie, I'm going to give you a second to uh, introduce yourself. Um, Basil actually, his network has just been too bad, guys. He he can't mm -hmm. make it back onto the stream, so he says he's watching, participating, mm -hmm. and he said thank you for the opportunity to be amongst such uh, amazing creators. Um, he feels he feels incredible to be um, in your ranks. So, well, so um, awesome. that's great. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Jamie. Go ahead and introduce yourself and 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 who your uh, publishing company is, real quick. Well, my name is Jamie Colby, as you guys already know. Also, most people call me Z Hill, which is my fans. But uh, I am the owner of T Steak Comics. We've been doing this for twenty five years. You know, constantly running and ongoing. So, uh, yeah, I'm here live with you guys fellow amazing indie stars out there that are just making the world shine brighter and brighter every day. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. And uh proud honor for crypto comics. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Okay. So Short now, I had, I had somebody who go ahead, Matt. Did you say, Oh yeah. Uh, we have a question coming in from Chimera. Uh, Excellent. let me read that one off. Uh, <clears throat> Are there sometimes control issues behind the decisions to go or stay indie, i.e. a big part of uh, the motivation is to avoid the demand of big name publishers might put on you and or your work? I'm going to say yes. I did one book. So I took my other book on the killing of Bin Laden and I did it through Simon & Schuster and I've never really been heavily edited before. 
And so it was daunting. I mean, the, the amount of changes that they asked to do, it was daunting for me. So I, I probably would not go that route, but it was great to have on a resume, so. Wow. I know like way back in my origin story, we originally signed with a publisher to do Dream Keepers. And then they wanted to make some small tweaks, which were actually quite reasonable. But I was younger and more fiery, and I was like, I don't want anyone making any changes. <laughs> <laughs> I like I want these characters to be allowed to say naughty words occasionally. So we uh, we went independent largely as a result of that. Um, so that was a little silly. But I think a secondary motive that a lot of comic people are going independent, even people that are established industry pros, is because uh, the publishers take a huge cut of the money. And a lot of times, if your project blows up, and you don't have the rights to it, and you don't really even get a lot of money from it. If you, let's say, like not everyone makes it big, but if you have a really successful project and you're in the industry, you might not get paid that much. But if you're an indie, you get all of the benefit. And a lot of people, you know, they want to bet on themselves and they want to go for that. For us, we've only got, um, other than myself, one publisher in all of Australia that does graphic novels. So it hasn't been a massive. Um, or comics are uh, massive industry here. It's only now that it's starting to to become quite popular, and it's interesting that some of the bigger book companies um, over here are the ones that have started to, um, you know, put their foot in the market rather than actual comic companies or anything like that. So, uh, for me, it was about actually offering. Um, well, one, publishing my own stuff, but now offering a, a pathway to people to get published before they move on to, to someone um, bigger. I don't mind being that that stepping stone for someone to, to get um, further in their career. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people that I've worked with move on. Um, my original artist, Jerry Gaylord's moved on to Warner Brothers, who's now been picked up by um, Activision. Um, so, you know, I've, I've worked with Eddie Nunez, um, you know, I've worked with a lot of who's, who's done Masters of the um, Universe on, on Netflix. So I've been able to work with a, a bunch of, of um, really good and talented people. And I don't mind being that stepping stone for them to, to get on to their next career. But for us here in Australia, we just don't have any any options here. So I, I want to be that option. I want to help people kind of avoid all the pitfalls that, uh, that I've made along the way, which is many, very many expensive pitfalls. So if I can help people um, move along and uh, get to a point where they're able to, to create, um, but at the same time understands that I've come from an independent view and they will retain all of their IP um, if they publish through us. That's the one thing that I really wanted to to kind of make sure people understood that if they came through me, that they actually hold held all of their IP. The only thing that I would be taking is the the publishing uh, rights of their IP, so that um, you know independent creators can you know understand that uh, they can create and have full control without uh, someone coming coming in going make this change, make that change, um, and uh, also if it does blow up, that they have the right to, to say thanks for, for getting us there and, and out the door they go. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a question that was actually just sent to me. Um, Wait, yeah. Who? Yes. We actually have a question from chat that goes back to the emails. Do you want to okay. do that one first or do you want to do the Let one? Let me you see. Got? Is this it's, uh, it's Valerie Finnegan's Valerie? one? Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can find I'll, it. I have I'll to scroll it. up. I'll pop stuff. it up for you. It, I'll oh, pop thanks. it up for you. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of people uh, who sign on to email lists don't retain interest afterwards. How do you keep them interested? <laughs> well, I let's think, go uh, to anybody. I don't have don't to, sell them. to them. Don't just sell to them. That's that's the one that's the one thing I think a lot of people make is they just send email after email going, buy this, I've got this, buy this, I've got this. Like actually engage with them. Um, you know, so you know, a lot of the times during COVID, my, my email started with I hope you're staying safe. Um, it's actually got their their name in the email, so it's personalized to them, um, as well as uh, you know. Um, when you're talking about stuff, give them sneak peeks behind behind the views, the creation process, add value to your to your emails, I think is is the biggest thing. If you're just trying to 
to sell to people all the time, then then that can can lose interest um, uh, very very quickly. So for me, it's all about you know retaining engagement. Um, you know, uh, not selling all the time, giving them um, useful information, whether that's tips, tricks, um, PDFs, um, all these type of things uh, before. I then have a launch and, and, and like, I'll oh, come on this journey with us for another Kickstarter. Okay. If, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind intervening on this one. Um, Go ahead. I, what, I, what I've done is um, throughout all these years, on constant ongoing advertisement, which really helped hit up your local community, help everybody else you can find out. And yeah, you know, hitting up those emails, if people subscribe to your channel, absolutely, definitely hit that up. But uh, progress yourself further outside the box, you know, find other different sources to keep more people going and then keep giving them that content, good content that they would love to strive on. Because once they fall in love with you guys, you know, you guys end up with what I have. We call them core fans and hardcore core fans. Our hardcore <laughs> core fans, those are people who are really into our stuff and they know every single thing about us. It's nuts. And I love those guys. They're, they're pretty intense, but uh, that's basically how it becomes, you know, they, they really sink their teeth in the end. They just don't want to let go, which is fine. It's awesome. Like right. another, another helpful tactic is if you can develop a community and activities that the community does to have fun, then you can start to make parts of that newsletter, not about what you're doing, but what about they're doing and mm. people really like that. Absolutely. That's why we do a weekly show on our channel too. And we get our fans really involved into it. And we talk and converse with our fans every single week. So it, they love it, you know, get them, get them involved. Uh, so basically it's a community thing. If, if you can, if you can engage the community, if you can get the community kind of, kind of rolling and not, not just the sales pitch, like Sean was saying, but actually a community where you guys are talking about things, the interests, of course, the interests, um, within the, the industry. That's what, that's what kind of the way you're going with that. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Before we go any further, uh, we need to actually give a badge away. Oh my gosh. We Ooh. haven't given a badge away. Uh, Quick, hurry, uh, no, give it no, me. we haven't. So if you go on to the crypto slash dashboard. So this is just your dashboard right here, guys. You scroll down to my badges. Oh my heck. I can't believe we haven't gotten this yet. <laughs> just one second. And put in the code Garage Band of Comics. Garage Band of Comics? Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. This is an indie panel, after oh, all. Dude. Okay, so Garage Band of Comics, all one word. It doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. And yeah. need some you indie. get the I Need Some Indie badge. Nice. All right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Woo. Did, you put that, did you put that in the, uh, the uh, um, chat? Oh, yep. I'll put it in right now. Thank you, sir. Oh, I dig it. <laughs> My collection is growing. My collection is growing. Sorry, y'all. That's I make them do that for me. No, I, I like it in those badges. It does get addictive. Oh, yes, it does. Now we do have a question from the field. He 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 just likes his name being seen. He's feeling yeah, right, yeah. Out right now. Um, but who is the biggest name in the industry that you haven't worked with but want to? And first person to raise their hand, and then we'll just move around because I want everybody to answer. Oh, <laughs> right <on. laughs> so many. I want to work with Tom. Jamie, you want to work oh. with Tom? Jamie. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I would. That would be awesome. Uh, Todd McFarlane would be great. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, David Lilly. Um, I've been hearing great things about Sean Gordon Murphy. His art is spectacular. So. Okay. And oh, we got a head shake. Better be careful. I worked, I worked with him. He's, <laughs> yeah, not, not the greatest. Darren, who, who, who do you want to work that you haven't worked with, Darren? I, him, I actually gave him his start. So Really? Really? Oh, nice. He did, oh. uh, yeah. He did a, a a small thing in Judo Girl for us, and then he also did uh, Lost Raven, which is our HIV graphic novel. Oh. And he did that, um, yeah. So good luck with that. 
<laughs> People get better, Darren. I, I, you know what? You're always going to get the truth from me, no matter what. I don't. That's why I, like, I just will always tell it. I just like that's why I'm like I get in trouble for bleeding cool, all that stuff. It's just like whatever. So well, we love you, anyways. I know. Yeah, Geo. I'm just gonna <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna quickly drop off. I actually had to do some back end stuff to get ready for this next. Uh, oh, oh, oh. That we have. Oh. But it was so great to be here on this panel with all these great indie creators, and you guys are great. It's so good to uh, interact with all of you, and I hope everyone else enjoys the rest. Okay, of the give show. us the name before you go. Give us the name. The name of <laughs> who's the one person you, you want, want to, to work, work with, with that haven't had a chance to? Get? David Lilly doesn't count. Emperor Paul. Oh, <laughs> oh Emperor Paul. <Palpatine. laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Okay. <laughs> See you, Geo. See you guys. Later, Take care, Later. Gemma. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She already so she's hard. already working with him. I am working with Chad Harden, which <laughs> is is awesome. I guess if I I would I wouldn't mind doing something with uh Michelle Chakowsky who does Ava's Demon. Mm, okay. And that is a big indie comic out there. All right. So Darren yeah, cool. Who is the who's the one person and, and this is gonna be hard for Darren because he's probably worked with everybody. Sure. Right? I pick you. Me? Yeah, I pick you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Have fun. I'll, I'll, I'll take start. it. I want to do a conspiracy theory comic book series. Oh, dude. I would yes. read that. I would I totally will. read that. <laughs> we can come up with something cool. We can come up with yeah, something I'll, real I'll cool. I've thought of it already. It's called Sod Chops. <laughs> Shutting chops take over the world. Those are pretty amazing pork chops. <laughs> All right, PCT, what about you? Well, I did say uh, Todd oh, McFarlane. Yeah, that's right. You did. There, Sorry. Way, to, way to just totally but, like yeah, not even yeah. hearing. Whoops, it happens. I made a mistake. I wanted to see what <laughs> no. it's like to be human. Just did, I no, came Matt down. Is actually, I like, Matt, Matt is yeah. actually helping with fr what Fry normally takes care of. So he's actually like, if, <laughs> he makes it look easy, but it's it's not. If, if there was one guy I wouldn't mind doing a side by side comic book with, um, to, it's sad that he's passed, but um, unfortunately, I can't do that. So, yeah. Stand oh, me. I know who. Stan the Man. Stan the Man. Yeah, that's right. You did a tribute for him in one of your comic books. That's, yep. Yep, that's right. I did. It's a company that's still publishing, though, so you can work on one of those. Yeah. It's not the same, but... It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are coming up on a hard stop, guys, so before we, before we bolt, I really want to do the shameless plug. So each one of you get the opportunity... Oh my no. God, he's back! <laughs> hey, we can't hear you. We can't hear you, Fry. Could you say that again? <laughs> I don't even like the way he's acting. We're not going to have him in here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, he jumped off. He's mad at me. Oh, he should get back in here. But we're going to do the shameless plug. So, Gemma, you first. Okay. Uh. I have my comics, Children of Eldar and Temerity. You can read them online for free, and you can find links on my site at gemmayoung.com. We are also launching our Kickstarter for the second issue of Temerity on January 19th, and we are really excited about it, and the art is awesome because Chad is the one doing it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and now, Darren. Uh, ah, Tiger King 2, the comic book, just came out. Carol Baskin approved. And then we also <laughs> have the Space Force is coming out. It's up for a adult video award. Oh my so gosh. We're excited to have to do have porn without doing porn. And That's then we also have uh, <laughs> two. We have uh, political power Pete Buttigieg. I'll give you guys an exclusive here. We're also doing uh, political or uh, female force AOC. That would oh, be right on. So. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Oh, Darren. Wow. David Lilly. All right. Uh, you can read our comic free at dreamkeeperscomic.com. And if you want to get the best hard copies we've ever made, the Volume 5 Indiegogo campaign is now in demand. So you can jump in there and pre-order. And there's a link to that at dreamkeeperscomic.com. Awesome. Sean. Hey, you can find us uh, at Comics 2 Movies uh, on every platform. So Facebook, 
Um, our website's comicstomovies.com.au, uh, as well as Twitter, Comics to Movies, and Instagram, Comics to Movies. Uh, our next Kickstarter will be the 19th of um, December for Fractured Shards with actor Dan Furigal. We're going to do a live launch. Um, and we're going to work with uh, with Crypto Comics to do something special as well. So I yes. uh, would love uh, everyone to, to come on just before Christmas and uh, and uh, have a look at this awesome, awesome cyberpunk dystopian crazy uh, series that we've we've created. Very different from anything I've done before. So super excited! Excellent, Tom. Um, you can check us out at facebook.com backslash t3comics. Um, we have a book, Aurora and Death Dwells, a remake of an older book we had about to come out, and we will be running a Kickstarter for both of those in, I don't know, like a month or two. We haven't set a date yet, but yeah. All right. And Jamie. Well, core fans, I must say... You want to know where it's at? Go on tccomics.com and pick up all our great merchandise. You guys can pick up at the Core Shop and Core Shop X, where you can find all these great, wonderful T-shirts and all of our comic books as well. There you'll find Zolik Unleashed Season 0 and Zolik Unleashed Season 1, which is our newest, latest issue right here. Season 1, Death in Line. So pick it up now. Also, the DT series, which is out now as well. And Hellbound, Baz's Twisted Mind, Hellview Chronicles, and many more coming soon to you. Also, find us on... Uh, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And join us on our unrestricted core pod chat where we go all unleashed. So find us there. Awesome. Hey, everybody. I just want to thank you for being a. Jared, what about the guy from uh, the other guy that wasn't with us? Oh, Bazil. Yeah. yeah, give him some credit, man. Zanera, Zanera Comics. Um, he's Zanera Comics. He actually. Give me a second. Um, I'm trying to find his links. Slow down, Jared. Oh, I, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Fry makes this look so easy, but. <laughs> I know, oh I know. God. I shouldn't have made him mad when I kicked him off like that. Oh, I know. Okay. I'm sorry. There, I, I did that to you. Up. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, Basil, he is, um, he is uh, from Cameroon, Africa. He, his comic company is Zanera Comics. Um, the best place to find his work right now is actually in Crypto Comics Marketplace. Um, he has uh, Katongo, and then he, I think it's the Sorcerer's Son, son or um, I'd have to look at that second name, but he has uh, four issues of Katongo, and then he has one uh, preview issue of the Sorcerer's, uh, I think it's the Sorcerer's Son, um, but that's where you can actually see his work, and then once we re uh, reach live transaction, you'll be able to actually buy from him and support him as well, um, and then we hopefully will be doing something with him soon in relation to a regional spotlight. Um, where we are going to be kind of showcasing the extreme um, environment that he's working in. It's it's pretty incredible. It's pretty impactful when you get an understanding of what Bazil goes through to create comics. Um, also, they're going to be doing a, um, a fundraising for a uh, printer so that they can print the comic books and give them to the kids in their schools and stuff like that. And we're going to be uh, helping Bazil get that out with our show as well. So hopefully people are um, staying tuned to that and we can generate some, some love for creators in Africa because they they really, um, they really struggle, and and it's an incredible thing that they are producing such excellent work. It's it's fantastic, so we're we're glad to be a part of that. Hey, uh, can I ask you a question there, Jared? Um, if you wouldn't mind, hook me up with him. I would love to once I'm able to get my children's books don't you know published and whatnot, and uh, I want to donate a whole bunch of those. To, to awesome. Children of awesome. All right. Yes, I would love to, guys. Awesome. Thanks again, everybody. We are four minutes over. Thank so. You. It has been a pleasure to be with you all. You guys are fantastic. Round of applause for everybody. Thank you for joining on. And catch you on the flip side, y'all. If you guys want to stick around after uh, the uh, stream is over, let me. You can. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to. <laughs> sure. All right. Take us out I'll here, I'll see Matt. you guys next time. Woo. Hey, guys.